Republicans in District 4 are down to the final few days to cast their vote for who they think should fill the vacant supervisor seat in District 4. So joining us now to talk more about her campaign and why she believes she's the best candidate for the job is Council Member Monica Montgomery Stepp. Good morning to you, Monica. Thanks for being here. Good morning. Thanks for having me. It's good to be here again. So as we as we look at this in the final few days, you are the only current uh, politician as a council member yes. for the city. Why take on the role and try to get a seat at the table at the county level? Well, the county, they make such important decisions. The supervisors have a lot of responsibility. They have an extremely large budget. I think they should be at the center of dealing with the homelessness crisis because they are the public health, mental health agency for the entire county. So, it, you know, there's a lot at stake in this election, um, and that's why I'm running for this seat. This is a seat vacated by Nathan Fletcher. Can you talk about policies that you think would be different from Nathan Fletcher, or do you think it would be more of a continuation of the policies uh, he supported while there? Yeah, well, I think that my style is very different. Um, as a city council member, I really have built out a community governance model where we bring all stakeholders to the table, no matter what policy issue we're dealing with. And so I think that that is important important as we try to build trust in government, try to gain understanding of each other, even when we don't have the same point of views, that we really lead from a place of putting neighborhoods first, putting communities first, bringing people to the table that maybe have never been there um, before and hearing from them and then going back to the table and trying to develop the policy. We don't develop the policy and then come back to the community and try to find people that will sign on to what we want to do. It's the exact opposite of that. And so, yes, my value sets are very similar. Um, you know, I want to tackle the homelessness issue. I believe in a level of enforcement, but I also believe in a level of treatment um, and providing mental health services for what people need, but I think my style, I think, is what is the dif di the differing factor here. When uh, you, you look at this race on, on the face of it, you know, uh, with uh, political parties, you have two Democrats and two Republicans in this race, sure. you and Janessa Goldbeck both being uh, the Democrats, you need a 50% a vote to, to get uh, that seat yes. in order to not get to that runoff. What differentiates you and Janessa Goldbeck in this race? Well, quite a bit. Um, I really, for the last five years, being a council member and even before that, have been very consistent with what I believe. And again, I bring all people to the table. I also have a strong, strong core values. My pillars of governance have always been the same. I want to provide safe and healthy communities for people. Um, I want to work on continuing to um, reimagine public safety and that's, you know, it's different for different people, but we've done some things that actually work in our communities and I want to provide economic opportunity for all. I'm the only person that has done those things and has a record in office under the pressure of being a politician and having to deal with special interest and still being an independent voice, just like the UT said. Um, that I'm thoughtful and independent. Um, I have proven that even in times of severe pressure. And so that really is one of the big differences between myself and all of the other candidates. Yeah. Uh, you know, you, you, when you talk about public safety, I, I know you're well aware that uh, earlier this week there, there was a news conference with uh, Jared Wilson, who's the president of the San Diego Police Officers Association, mm -hmm who said that, that you voted in ways that has been a detriment to public safety and that mm -hmm. uh, really it was, it was more of a support anybody else. Uh, do, you, do you care to respond to, uh, to his, his recommendations and what he was saying about your record on public safety? Sure, I'll respond to my record. Uh, one of the first votes that I took as a city council member was to approve lateral bonuses for police officers who would recruit other police officers into our force. I have supported every budget, um, increase after increase for the last five years, every year. I facilitated that $5.2 billion budget as the city's budget chair this past year. I've supported money for recruitment and retention and hiring firms. Um, I have supported funding for police officers to receive down payment assistance to, for homes in the areas that they serve. Um, and I have also held our department accountable 
where we see uh, data that supports that there is racial profiling in the department. Um, that is not anything specific or new to San Diego. That's an issue that we're dealing with nationwide. And I'm going to be there so that we can continue to give our law enforcement officials what they need and also continue to hold them accountable just like we would everyone else, just like I asked my community to do for me. So I'm going to continue that record and I'm proud of it. Yeah. Some would say, though, that the department, you know, with so many vacancies, some of those vacancies uh, were due to uh, the mandates that the city held them to with, you know, with the COVID pandemic, uh, which which you supported. Do you do you see that as something that, you know, is is a negative on, on the voting record there? I mean, would you would you change that as far as, you know, I mean, the vacancies that we're seeing are, are hurting the city. Sure. No, absolutely. And I completely agree with you. That's why I've supported uh, raises every time around uh, during negotiations with the Police Officers Association and the department. Uh, you know, I, I think that with every decision every elected official has to make, especially with such a, a large um, uh, thing like COVID, you know, that was a very, very uh, a big impact on our communities. I think we always have to go back to the table and evaluate what we've done. But I will say that within those mandates, we did provide exemptions for folks, and many people took advantage of those exemptions and stayed on with the city of San Diego. And so it's, it's, it's folks' choice to, to leave. I'm going to do whatever I can. Um, to make sure that officers can live in San Diego and um, can have a good quality of life just like the rest of our neighbors. Um, I, I, I stand by what I've done, especially with providing those exemptions. Uh, we are down August 15th. I think yes. we've, we've, we are days here in the race, so people can go to your website to learn more about your platform. Yes, www.monica, the number four, San Diego. Dot com. Please go and, and visit us. We're excited. We have five days left. All right. Monica, thank you so much for the time this morning. And as we have been continually mentioning, this is a look at the a number of candidates that are running for District 4. And uh, now we have spoken to all of them this week in the final days here. So once again, you have a founder of Reopen San Diego, Amy Reichert, Marine Veteran CEO of Vet Voice Foundation, Janessa Goldbeck, and Marine Veteran Paul McQuig, along with Council Member Monica Montgomery Stepp.